this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make this crystal leaf necklace and this is tutorial number three for the treasure box the summer sparkle that I released last week and um, if you do not have the box don't worry I do have some of these beads on the website so that you can check them out as ggctreasures.com however the 4x4 crystals that I use the 4x4 cuboids in this particular pattern and in the box I do not have any more of that color I have a few other colors and I know surely at budgetbead.shop budgetbeads.shop has this color she said she has a bunch of it so if you want that particular color then go go ahead and go there I do have on my website some turquoise mix that would go really good with this or this um, I think it's steel gray with blue and purple that's that would go good with this and so would the palest golden those would all go really good with this so don't fret you can find them and like I said you can shop Shirley's shop too she has this color and I believe it's the powder blue is what it's called <clears throat> So check that out and I have a bunch of these leaves and I have them in different colors so you can also use different colors of cuboids to go with it. Let's go ahead and get started on this particular tutorial. Okay, for this project I am using some of the things that are in the GGC treasure box and what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using the large crystal leaf beads and there's 10 of them in the package and we're going to be using all 10. I'm going to use the 4x3 Wandel crystals in the package also and I'm going to be using the 4x4 cuboid crystals that are in the package. I'm going to be using one of the toggle clasps and I'm going to be using 80 and 110 seed beads. If you need some of the seed beads, I have them on my website also. And this is an 80 and this is an 110 Toho Galvanized Permanent Finish Aluminum. I'm going to add to the things that are in the box with some soft flex. And this is a fine beading wire. You don't have to have soft flex. You can have any wire that is of a fine diameter. And then beading wire, that is bead stringing wire. Then I'm going to use some Nanofill 10 pound in the clear. And I'm going to use a size 10 beading needle. And I have decided to try Beadalon beading needles this time. I usually use John James, but I bought this package. So I'm going to try those and see how those work out. And I'm also going to be using some size 2 crimp beads. These are Beadalon size 2. And you will need to add those to the contents of the box also. So let's go ahead and get started with this project. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is put about a wingspan of the nano fill onto your needle. And then we're going to begin with our cuboid crystals and we're going to pick up a cuboid. And let me get you a little closer here. Okay, so we're going to pick up a cuboid, two 11 O's, and a cuboid, and two 11 O's. Just like this. Let me get even closer now. We're going to take these beads and we're going to bring them to the end of the thread. And we're going to leave about an uh, 8 to 10 inch tail just so that we have enough to finish off the end. So I've reserved some tail. And then I'm going to come back up through the first crystal. Just like this and we're going to pull, hold on to the crystal, hold on to your tail thread, and just kind of guide the thread through and pull them together like this. And then we're just going to sew back through all of these. So go through the two 11 O's, we're coming out of the crystal here. Let me get you even a little closer here. We're coming out of the crystal, we're going to go into the two 11 O's, 
I'm going to hold on to all the beads and pull my thread through. Then we're going to go through the crystal here. And I have a lot of thread, so I'm just taking it slow, pulling it through, go through the two 11 O's. And now we're going to tie the working thread with the tail thread. So just grab your tail thread and your working thread and tie an overhand knot. Bring it down and pull tightly. And that's just going to hold everything steady for us so that we can begin this stitch. So what we're going to do now is we are coming out of where the knot is. So we need to go through the two 11 O's right next to the knot. And just pull the thread through. Then we're going to go down into this first crystal right here. Then we're going to pick up one of our big crystals. So the big leaf crystal, just go through it. It's top drilled, so you're going to go through the top here. And you're going to drop it all the way down to the crystals here. I'm going to lay this down so you can see it. This first one is a little tricky, so because the thread wants to slide away from you, but it can be done. So you're going to pick up a cuboid crystal, and then you're going to pick up two 11 O's, and then you're going to pick up one of the small cuboid crystals, and two 11 O's. Just like this. You're going to drop these down to your piece. Now, if you hold on to it, hold on to the big crystal, let me rearrange a little here give myself some more room to work. If you hold on to the big crystal on your fingers and then kind of put your thumb over the little crystal, it's going to help hold things in place for you. So you're going to have it at a little angle here and you're going to go up through the bottom of that cuboid crystal. Don't worry if the other beads fall away, but hold that cuboid into place and pull your thread through. And yes, I know my fingers are covering it, but there is just no other way to do it. And once I have gone all the way through, pulled my thread through, they form a unit like this. Now, on this first one, you have to kind of take the cuboid, push it down, and tighten it up against the big crystal. And then we're going to sew through this little unit again. So I'm just going to turn it in my hand a little bit, and I'm going to go through these two 11 o seed beads right here. I'm going to hold on to it. So I can pull my thread through and give a little tug. And then I'm going to go through this crystal right here. Hold on to it. Give a tug. Then I'm going to go through these two 11 O's right here. So I'm just sewing back around the unit is all I'm doing. And then up through this crystal right here. And here is where you can actually tighten it pretty well. So as I come through, I'm just going to pull it as I'm holding on to it. And then you should have your crystals right up against the big crystal pretty nicely. Should be nice and firm like that. Now we are going to pick up a cuboid crystal and an 8 seed bead and a cuboid just like this. You're going to cross over the top of the big crystal and go down into the top of this crystal over here. So I'm just going to go down into this crystal. Let's see if I can get a hold of it. Right here. And I'm just going to hold on to it and pull. Now I'll lay it down so you can see it, and that's what that looks like. But we need to sew through this big crystal and these um, cuboids in the 8 again to secure it. So I'm going to pick it up. 
I'm coming out of the cuboid crystal right here. I'm going to go through the big crystal and just the big crystal and pull my thread through and give it a little tug. And then I'm going to go up through this crystal on this side. And then through the Edo, or excuse me, the cuboid and the Edo. And then through the Edo and the cuboid on this side. Right here. Hold on to it. And then I'm going to go into this cuboid that's attached to the big crystal right here. And hold on to it and pull my thread. Let's get you just a tiny bit closer here. Now we're going to go through the large crystal. So I'm just turning it sideways so my hand doesn't block everything. And I'm going through this big crystal. Now that's reinforced. And we need to sew up this crystal over these 11 O's and then into this bead here so we can start our next unit. So we're going to go up into this crystal right here. Then we're going to go into the two 11 O seed beads right here. And then down into this most outside little cuboid crystal right here. And that's our first unit. That's what it should look like. And it should be nice and firm because you've sewn through it and secured it very well. Make sure you have really good tension as you do all of these stitches. Now we're going to make our next unit and we're going to start with the large crystal. So we're coming out of the bottom of this one here. We're going to pick up one of our crystals and go through it. and just pull it down to your piece just like that. Now you're going to pick up <clears throat> excuse me, a cuboid, two 11 O's and a cuboid and two 11 O's like this and then we're going to drop that down to our crystal and again, we have to hold this into place. So what I like to do is I just like to pick it up and just kind of hold on to it, hold on to my little cube. I'm not going to hold it as well as you can because you need to see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to hold on to it on the top of the crystal and go into the bottom of the crystal. And pull. And you want to hold that crystal into place or it'll travel really far down your thread away from the big crystal and you don't want that. So this is what I have. Kind of weird looking. I'm just going to turn it a little bit in my hand. You can pull on your thread and push your crystal towards your other crystal if you'd like. And then just pick, go through and reinforce. So go through these two 11 O's right here. Like I said, it's kind of all weird and, and a weird place but that's okay because we'll tighten it up and fix it. Then I'm going to go down this crystal here. I'm going to put my thumb over it, hold them into place and then into these two 11 O's here. It's like this. And then up the bottom of this crystal right here. Now that unit is reinforced and we can do the top embellishment. So I'm just going to lay it down so you can see and then I'm going to pick up a cuboid and an 8-0 and a cuboid. Just like this. 
and I'm going to go over the top of the crystal and into the crystal on this side. From the top down, like this. And just pull these through. Like that. Now I need to sew through the crystal and then up this crystal into these two crystals on top in the 80 and back down and through again. So we're just going to sew around what we just put on. I'm going to go into this crystal right here. And then up into this one. And then into this one and this one. down into this one and the one beneath it, if I can do them both at the same time. Now I'm going to turn it just slightly and go back through the crystal. Now it's completely reinforced. Now I can sew up this crystal, these two 11 O's, and down into this crystal to do my next unit. And we'll do one more together here. So we're going to go up this crystal right here. Oops, excuse me. Hitting my lamp, making little bell noises. Now, you gotta make sure that these 11 O's don't catch your thread because they do constantly. So just make sure it doesn't get caught and go up through. And then let's go through these two 11 O's here. So I'm gonna turn it a little more so I can get to it better. and pull through those two 11 O's. Come down through the little crystal. <clears throat> and then we're ready to put on our big crystal again. So every time we're coming down after we've reinforced, we will go through the crystal. So now we'll go through one of these big crystals. And these are actually really shiny if you, my fingerprints weren't all over them. <laughs> I'll polish them up and show them to you later. Okay, so now I've come through the big crystal. Now I need to pick up a cuboid and two 11 O's and a cuboid and two 11 O's. I'm going to drop these down and then I'm going to pick up my piece and I'm just going to hold this crystal I'm going to put it kind of at an angle up like this so I can get into the bottom, hold on to that crystal with my hand, and then go up into the bottom of the crystal so you can see what I'm doing. Now I have to reposition because showing you, I've dropped it. So I'm just going to hold on to it, go up through the crystal, hold on to the crystal as I come through, and pull the crystals around, tug it, and then let go of it, like this. Now, I need to sew through this unit. Now, it can get confusing if your unit turns. So just know that at this point, you should be coming out of the top. So if this unit kind of turns, know that you should be coming towards the top, tighten everything up, and then reinforce it. So I'm just sewing through all of these beads we just put on, holding them into place as I do so, and trying to show you, making sure you can see what I'm doing. But right there, I'm coming through the 11 O's, then I hold on to it, and then I go up through this crystal right here, hold on to it, and give it a nice tug so it's nice and tight and everything's nice and um, snug against the big crystal. Then pick up a cuboid crystal, an 8 and a cuboid. Come down 
over the top, come down into this crystal here. This is what I've got on my needle. I'm coming down into this one. Do this slowly and gently, and you shouldn't have any problems. Because it's a little awkward. Now that I've come through that cuboid, I can go through my big crystal. <clears throat> then I can go up through this crystal and just reinforce this entire area on the top and the big crystal. So now I'm coming back through these two beads on top. I have to hold on to it, sorry. Down through this crystal here. And I tend to go one at a time, most of the time, just to retain a nice shape. Now I'm going to go back through the crystal and I'm completely reinforced. I'm going to go up through this crystal here. And then I'm going to turn my piece so I can get to it, go through the two 11 O's. Down through this very last crystal right here. Hold on to it. And now I'm ready to put my next large crystal on and just repeat that. Continue to repeat that until you have made all of your crystals. On the very last one, I'll come back. But we'll do all 10 crystals this way. Okay, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and finished all of my units. Now, I'm coming out of this very last cube after reinforcing my last unit. And it's coming out just like you would be if you were to add another crystal. So you just make the unit exactly like you've made the others. You're coming out of this last crystal bead. And then we're going to add, we're going to pick up around one of our little rondelles or three by four rondelles or four by three whichever and then we're going to pick up a crystal cuboid an 80 and a crystal cuboid and I will show you I know you can't see me so this is what we're picking up the rondelle the crystal an 80 and another crystal cuboid we're going to drop this down to the piece here and then we are going to go back into the opposite side of the bead we're coming out of. So we're coming out of the bottom of this bead. We're going to go into the top of it. Just like this. And pull that around. And now this makes a little curve upward so that we can now string the top of our necklace. So what we're going to do is we're going to reinforce this and then we're going to tie it off and then we're going to do the same to the other side with the tail we've left. So let's go ahead and sew through all these beads we just put on. I'm sewing through the rondelle and then I'm going to go up through this cuboid right here this 8 and the cuboid behind it. And then I'm going to go back into the connecting cuboid right here. Now just for good measure, let's go ahead and sew around this one more time because this is the end of the necklace and if there's any tension, this is where it's going to be. So we want to make sure it's nice and strong. So let's just go ahead and sew all the way around it again until you come out of the crystal that you're connecting to. Ah, I keep thinking I'm going to go through both of those, but that's not happening. So we're going to go here. And right underneath this crystal, right between the 11O and the crystal we're coming out of, is a thread bridge. We get really, really close if I can, without blurring. And we're going to go under that thread bridge, kind of between the beads here. 
and it wants to move around so just make sure you guide it carefully. Go through the loop you've just created and pull that knot down between the beads and you're going to have to make sure it goes there. And then just pull it tight, just like that. Now I'm going to sew through these 11 O's right here, up through this crystal here. Let's see, my thread just got wrapped around the crystal. So let me see if I can get that off. Boy, it really wrapped. We we'll get it. There we got it. Okay, so watch your thread. And then I'm going to go up into this crystal here, right along the top here. Pull it down. Watching my thread. Sorry guys, out of camera. Let me back off a little bit. This is proving to be a little bit more challenging than it should here. Just watch your thread, just pull slowly. And then you can go ahead and cut this thread off. So I'm just going to, I actually think I'm going to go through this 8-0 and this crystal and poke through the back and then cut it off. It'll be less obvious than right on top of the necklace. And both sides are the same, so they're reversible, but I'm just going to go there. Cut that off. You can sew through more and tie more knots if you feel like you need to. That's fine. I'm generally trying to keep the video shorter, so um, you can do it as much as you want. Now, I have taken my needle off of this thread on this side that I um, just tied off, and I'm going to put it onto the tail thread that I reserved right here. So we're going to go ahead and do that, and we'll be right back. So just put your needle on your other on your tail okay. thread. Okay. So I put my needle on the other thread. Now I have to apologize for how dark the last few scenes were. I just realized my camera wasn't plugged in. It was running on battery, and generally when it runs on battery, it's not as bright. So I apologize for that. But now we are coming out of this side here now where our tail thread was. So let's get really close. You're coming out between the 11 o and the crystal because that's where we tied our knot. You're going to go down into the crystal. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did on the other side. We're going to pick up a rondelle crystal. Let me just turn this over. So this is the other side of my necklace, but I'm going to turn it over so I can reach it better. This is the rondelle here, and then I'm going to pick up a cuboid, an 8 and a cuboid. Just like this. And I'm going to go into the opposite side of the crystal I'm coming out of. Just like that. Now, go ahead and sew through that twice. So through and tie it off just like you did the other side, making sure it's nice and secure, and we'll be back. Okay, so now I have tied off both ends, and I'm ready to string my upper portion. Now, of course, if you're a bead weaver and you want to continue doing a right angle weave or something else, you can do that. But I'm just going to simplify this, and I have cut about 16 and a half inches of my fine beading wire. Now, this is going to be dependent upon how long you want your necklace to be. I don't want mine to be any longer than 18 inches because I want this to lay right at the collarbone so that it lays out correctly. If it's longer, it'll kind of look like this, and I want it to be like this right at the base of my throat. So this is going to depend upon how you want to wear yours, how much you cut. I don't want mine to be any more than 18 inches. So I have cut about 16 and a half inches giving myself a, a little bit of room to do some of my crimping and handling of the wire. So you can lay this out on your bead board and decide exactly how long you want to cut yours. Now, you're going to measure, let me just show you, you're going to measure by laying it on your bead board like this. 
and then you can measure how many inches you need. I want to get to 18 inches, so I have to go to the 9. However, I'm going to double the wire, so I'm going to cut twice the amount that I measure here. So I have 16 and a half inches is what I have. You want twice the amount, and then you want a couple inches or an inch and a half to play with while you are trying to crimp the ends. So you're going to have to cut two of those so that you can do the other side too. But right now we're concentrating on this side. So we've got the wire and I'm just going to put it through this 80 seed bead right here. And then I'm going to pick up two 11 o seed beads on either side of my wire. So I'm going to back up just so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use 11 o's. So I'm going to pick up two 11 o's on this side and then I'm going to pick up two 11 O's on the other side of the bead that I'm going through, right there. And then I am going to, I'm designing, so give me a second. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up a cuboid crystal on either side. And then an 11 O on either side. And I'll show you close up what it looks like in a minute. And so you can see, this is what this looks like. Now I am going to put both of my wires together and I'm going to put, pick up a cuboid crystal. And I'm going to slide both of the wires through it. And this is why you want a fine beading wire. These rondelles, 8-0s, 11-0s, well, the 8-0s, the rondelles, and the cuboids are going to fit really nicely on a doubled wire like this. So, let me show you what I've got. This is what this should look like. You push this down and make sure that it's nice and snug. If you want to, you can get a crimp bead and crimp this right here. I'm not going to. I'm just going to string the rest of it and just make sure I keep good tension and when I crimp it off, I'll make sure that I crimp it off so that I have no slack. That's why um, this particular soft flex, this beading wire works really well simply because it has a lot of flexibility in it. So as you're wearing it, even though we're going to crimp it down tight, it will still have a lot of movement without breaking. So now I'm just going to begin stringing this. I'm going to use my rondelles and what's left of my cuboid crystals. Now these rondelles, I'm actually not using the full package like I showed you in the beginning. I'm using what's left over after I made my bracelet because I realize we only have one box here to work from. So I am using what's left over. I'm using what's left over of the strand that I used on here too. So you will know that you have enough to do whatever I do or you can do it any way you want. I'm going to pick up an 8-0 and then um, you can put as many 8-0's as you'd like or whatever you'd like. I'm going to slide it down both the wires now and then I'm going to pick up a rondelle crystal and put it on both the wires. And you want to make sure you have your wire centered pretty good. If, if at the end it's a little straggly like mine is, you can always cut them so that they're the same. But they're going through the beads just fine. I'm going to continue just stringing this until I get it the way I want it. You can use as many 8-0s as you'd like to fill up. We want to make sure we have enough crystals left over to do the other side. So I'm going to use mostly rondelle crystals and sprinkle in some of my cuboids also um, as kind of an accent. And then I'll come back and show you exactly what I've got. Let me get close up so you can see what it looks like so far. And this is what it looks like. And I'm just making sure I maintain my tension well. And we should be able to string that just fine. And then it should curve up around the neck really well. Okay, so I have now strung the length that I want. You can make it as long or as short as you want. I gave myself more than enough um, wire, so I could have gone a little bit longer if I wanted to. But I put it on my bead board, and it comes right up to the 9. I want it to be right around 18 inches, so that's going to work. So 
I'm going to now crimp this end. Let me show you the combination I used in case you're interested. So basically I just put a cuboid and then I put four rondelles, three cuboids, of course there's eight seed beads in between, and then five rondelles, and then three cuboids, and then four rondelles, and three cuboids. It doesn't really matter what order you put it in. It doesn't have to be any specific order. That's just what I came up with, and I'll match the other side to this side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my two ends together, and I'm going to put a size 2 crimp bead on these wires here. So I'm just going to pick it up, and then I'm going to use the clasp that I put in the box. It's kind of a big clasp for this. It might be nicer to have a lobster claw and an extender on the other side. But since this is what's in the box, this is what I'm going to use. So I'm just going to run it through the clasp. And then I am going to go back through the crimp bead with both of these ends. And I'm not going to worry about going through the crystal because I've got a crimp cover so I can do that. And I'm just going to make sure that I have these wires parallel inside here. So let me show you what I've got. So I slid them in and I'm just adjusting it to where the wires are parallel. There's four wires in there so it's a little harder to work with. Try to keep them together and then give yourself enough of a loop to where the clasp can move. Now I want to make sure that my beads are tight to re retain my shape down here. So I'm going to push my crimp bead down t on top of that first cuboid pretty tight and then adjust the top of it to the size I want, which is fine, the loop. And then I'm going to place my pliers on here, my crimping tool, and I'm going to place it to where my wires are parallel. Inside the crimp tube, everything is laying nice, and I'm using the second divot of the crimping pliers closest to the handle, and I'm just going to squeeze. Now, you can see I have them encased in there pretty well. Now, when you're using two wires, they're going to split like that. That's just going to happen. You're going to, they're going to come apart a little bit, and that's okay. Now that I have this crimp, I am going to turn it to the side and the first divot right here, so I used the second divot first, that was closest to the handle, now this first divot I'm going to place the crimp in sideways into that divot and I'm going to squeeze. Let me make sure it's in there properly and I'm just going to squeeze. And that's how you crimp just like that. And then we're going to cut these wires off, make sure my crimp is nice and tight. I don't think it's slipping, it feels pretty tight. So I'm just going to cut these wires real close to my crimp bead. And then I've got a little crimp cover. You'll need to add that too if you'd like to use that. But that will cover any little excess wire that's hanging out and it will make my crimp tube look a little bit better. So I'm just going to grab this into, I'm going to get my Mighty Crimpers for this. So I have a big pair of crimping uh, tools and I like to just place it in that first divot closest to the tip of the tool and just place it, the crimp tube inside can you see that? And then I'm just going to squeeze gently. And then I'm going to take it out and turn it and squeeze a little bit more until I close this to this um, cover. So I just kind of play with it, turn it until I get it closed. Using this Mighty Crimper is one of the easiest ways. Now, if you have a small crimp cover, this one's kind of big. If you have a smaller one, you can use your regular tool, too. Or you can just use a pair of chain nose or flat nose pliers. And that's what that looks like. So now, I'm going to 
yeah, that, that looks pretty good. Sometimes they stay open a little bit, and that drives me crazy, but it's okay. So now I'm going to back off and show you what this looks like. So this is going to hang just like this. Now we're going to do this other side exactly the same way we did this side. So cut another piece of your wire, slide it through your 8 seed bead, string it, and then put your other end of your clasp on, and we'll be back. Okay, so now you can see I have finished my necklace. I went ahead and completed this side of the necklace, matching it exactly to this side. So I just copied my pattern I did here, did it on this side, put my crimp bead on, put the other end of my clasp on, and my crimp tube cover, and it turned out really nice. This looks like it's a little odd shaped, but when it's on the throat, the way I designed it was so that this would come up properly and go around the neck and this would lay nice and straight across the front, and it does. I put it on and it looks really good. I looked like a princess or something. It was so pretty. So it's really, it turned out really very pretty. Now, of course, if you're not into doing all this bead weaving, you can just string these too. And I've still got some cuboids and some rondelles left. And so I can incorporate that into a couple of other designs. And like I said, if you want to make this adjustable so that the person wearing it, you could make it a 16 inch instead of an 18 inch and put a lobster claw and a chain so that anybody could wear this because this needs to be adjusted to where it can fit right at the collarbone. That's how it's going to lay properly. But this for me worked out just perfect and it looks really good. And I hope you liked this one. And onward and upward to mower. I'm going to make a few more tutorials on stuff in the box. And I hope you'll come join me and watch.